Podcast 29, Week 31. Welcome to the podcast, Your Pregnancy Week by Week. This podcast covers the 40 weeks of pregnancy in 38 segments and is based on the book, Your Pregnancy Week by Week, by Dr. Glade Curtis, MD, and me, Judith Schuler, MS. The information in our books and podcasts is a general informative guide about pregnancy. None of the information we provide is intended to replace, countermand, or conflict with the advice given to you by your own doctor. Always follow his or her advice. Use the information you learn here as a starting place in your dialogue to help you put your pregnancy concerns, questions, or interests into words. The goal of every pregnancy is a healthy mom and a healthy baby. To that end, our podcasts cover many topics. In each weekly podcast, we'll highlight information contained in the same weekly discussion in our book. We suggest you read each weekly chapter to learn further information, such as how baby is growing and changing and how you're growing and changing too. Our book also contains illustrations of changes in baby or you, advice for dads, charts, lists, boxes, an exercise for every week, a comprehensive glossary, hints, tips, snippets, and blurbs we just can't reproduce in a podcast. So let's get started on this week's discussion. We're going to look at week 31. A serious problem can be found by measuring the uterus over a period of time. It's called intrauterine growth restriction, IUGR. IUGR can indicate a fetus is small for its gestational age, which can cause concern. When the problem is diagnosed, bed rest may be recommended. If maternal disease causes IUGR, you must be treated to improve your health. An infant with IUGR is at risk of problems. Baby may not tolerate labor well and may need to be delivered before it is full term. Some women experience an increase in saliva during pregnancy. Hormones are the culprit. Too much saliva is called tylism. Often when you feel queasy, you don't swallow as much as you normally do, which results in buildup of saliva. Drink plenty of fluid to increase swallowing. Sucking on hard candies may also offer relief. Your body produces as much as 50% more blood and body fluids during pregnancy. Some of this extra fluid leaks into body tissues, causing swelling. If you take your shoes off and leave them off for a while, you may not be able to put them back on. And wearing rings and watches may also cause problems. We've suggested lying on your side when resting or sleeping. Now's the time it will pay off. You may notice you retain water and experience swelling if you don't lie on your side. I had a lot of swelling in my hands and feet when I was pregnant. I took off my rings and bought a plastic gold band to wear. It's in all the pictures we took right after delivery. And my feet. I was in Tucson, Arizona the entire summer where it's very hot. My son was born in September. My feet got so swollen, I ended up having one pair of shoes I could wear, a size 9 pair of flip-flops. Normally, I wear a size 7.5 shoe. It's time to start thinking about how you want to deliver your baby. Some women decide they are going to labor and deliver with natural childbirth. The description or definition of natural childbirth varies. Most agree it is birth with as few artificial procedures as possible. If you choose natural childbirth, you'll probably need some advance instruction to prepare for it. You need to practice many of the methods to prepare you and your partner or labor coach to use them. Three of the most well-known natural childbirth methods are Lamaze, the Bradley Method, and Grantley Dick Reed. Other childbirth methods include hypnobirthing, birth works, and birthing from within. Natural childbirth isn't for every woman. 
And even if you choose natural childbirth, keep an open mind. The goal in labor and delivery is a healthy baby and a healthy mom. If this means you end up having a C-section, be grateful it can be done safely. Babies that would not have survived birth in the past can now be delivered safely. This is a wonderful accomplishment. Salmonella bacteria can cause a lot of problems. There are over 1,400 different strains, so it has many sources. Keep in mind the following measures to stay safe. Clean your counters, utensils, dishes, and pans thoroughly. Cook poultry and pork so it's well done. Don't eat products made with raw eggs. Always thoroughly wash fruits and vegetables before eating. And avoid sprouts and raw or unpasteurized milk, cheese, and juices during pregnancy. Did you know you can get carpal tunnel syndrome during pregnancy, even if you aren't at risk? Carpal tunnel syndrome causes pain in the hand and wrist, which can extend into the forearm and shoulder. It's caused when a nerve in the wrist is squeezed by swelling. Treatment depends on symptoms. Splints may be used during sleep and rest, and symptoms usually disappear after delivery. A friend had full carpal tunnel syndrome during pregnancy. She said the pain was excruciating and she had to wear wrist splints all the time. She told me relief of the full syndrome was one of the main benefits of giving birth. Luckily, she hasn't had any recurrence of the problem since then. Preeclampsia describes a group of symptoms that occur only during pregnancy or shortly after delivery. No one knows what causes it, and it occurs most often in a first pregnancy. Checking your blood pressure and weight at every prenatal visit can alert your doctor to the developing problem. Preeclampsia problems are characterized by a collection of symptoms. No one symptom indicates preeclampsia. The most common symptoms are swelling, protein in the urine, high blood pressure, and a change in reflexes. Report any symptoms to your doctor immediately, particularly if you've had blood pressure problems during pregnancy. Many women have some swelling during pregnancy. Swelling in the legs or the hands does not mean you have preeclampsia. You must have other symptoms too. The goal in treating preeclampsia is to avoid eclampsia, which is seizures or convulsions. Treatment begins with bed rest. Drink lots of fluids and avoid salt and foods that contain sodium. You may be treated with medication to help prevent a stroke. If you can't rest in bed or if symptoms don't improve, you may be admitted to the hospital or your baby may need to be delivered early. If you think you've had a seizure, call your doctor immediately. Eclampsia is treated with medications similar to those prescribed for seizure disorders. Delivery does not mean the risk of preeclampsia is completely gone. Any woman can develop postpartum preeclampsia whether or not she experienced preeclampsia during pregnancy. It occurs when you have high blood pressure and excess protein in your urine after childbirth. Most cases develop within 48 hours after delivery, but it can develop up to six weeks or later after baby's birth. This is called late postpartum preeclampsia. Postpartum preeclampsia requires immediate medical attention. If left untreated, it can cause seizures and other serious complications. If you have recently given birth and have any of the symptoms of postpartum preeclampsia, call your doctor immediately. You may need emergency medical care. A friend's wife had postpartum preeclampsia. She didn't have any symptoms of preeclampsia during pregnancy. She gave birth, then developed the problems. My friend's wife is a physician, and she didn't recognize the symptoms. She had a great pregnancy doctor who identified the problem, which is not always easy. Luckily, my friend was treated immediately and recovered fully. Remember, our podcasts give you the highlights of what may be happening in any given week. Check our book, Your Pregnancy Week by Week, for more detailed information. You may also want to check out our book for partners, Your Pregnancy for the Father-to-Be. 
It covers pregnancy from a man's point of view and provides lots of valuable information a man may find very useful. If you want to find out more about our podcast, visit our website, yourpregnancyweekbyweek.com. If you're looking for something specific, check out the podcast topics list. It details topics covered in each podcast, so you can listen to a particular podcast or read a certain chapter week if you want more information, or if you want to check out something you missed or a topic we haven't covered yet.